we went over one story and it was uh-huh. that people were moving to Hilton Head and to South Carolina at a relentless pace. And then another story saying inventory's up. And so you're a consumer and you don't have access to the numbers like we do. Right. We don't know what the hell to think. All right, we got a good one for you today. We got Mike Broadhurst and Susan Smith in. We talk about all the people that are moving to Hilton Head and Bluffton and Beaufort County. We talk about mortgage, a lot about mortgage and why inventory is so low and why the newspaper has the numbers so wrong. Buff the numbers. What do you think? People keep talking about rising inventory and the, the numbers just don't prove it. They don't. It's just not happening. Yeah. So this week we brought 10 properties on the market. By comparison, this same week last year, 46. Yeah. Wow, inventory's going up. Yeah. yeah. And it's like almost a fifth. Yeah. Right? And over that same period of time, this week that we brought 10 properties on the market, we put 22 under contract in Bluffton. Yeah. But the schizophrenic news media, right, they say inventory's up. Yeah, well, just an observation about the news media. You know, we, the, 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 they're going to have to pass emergency legislation to uh, raise the debt limit, right? Yep. This is news. This happens every cotton picking year. Yep. So what are we surprised? Anyway, I pulled up some numbers. Um, 807 properties, houses and villas for sale in all of our MLS. Yep. So that includes even Hampton County, Jasper County, Beaufort County, everywhere, right? 807. Number of properties under contract, 1,265. Now, 50% more under contract than there are available. It just doesn't make sense for people to be panicking about inventory growing because there's still so much demand. So how far are we from the crash that everybody's talking about? I, I'm not putting on any uh, prognostication hat, but when you have to if you're going to run for president, no. But like if you don't believe just the raw numbers and you're focused on the results, I've been up here for a year and a half as everybody is saying, Things are crashing. They're gonna crash. Things are crashing. Uh, probably around a year ago, I had people saying to me that I was nuts and that like, what was I on? Because I was predicting prices to go up. If we look at prices in Bluffton over the last year, and at this point last year, things had begun to slow down, right? They're up 28%. Yeah. That's a crash? Prices up 28%? So I have a real life story, right? Okay. Jacob Weaver, he's on our team. Uh, Pretty good kid. Yeah, great. Awesome. He's awesome. He's writing a contract for a guy that we've been working with for actually two and a half years. He keeps delaying, putting off, putting off, putting off, buying. He said last night in a conversation because he wrote an offer on a villa. He said, you know, I kept thinking that values were going to come down. But as I keep watching it, every time something comes on the market, it's sold with anything that's interesting to me. Yep. The buyer. It's gone within four to five days, and it's at a higher price than the last one. Maybe I need to make a, a change in the way I think. But what if it goes down tomorrow? Like six months from now, it's going to go down? I don't know how it's possible that it's going to happen yeah. because of the inventory. Yeah, yeah. So we're not making suggestions based on what we want the market to do. We're looking and seeing inventory has historically been unbelievably low in demand. It's off a little bit, but it's it's off much less than inventory is. Like a car dealership that no cars in the lot can't have a record-breaking sales year if there's no cars to sell. We say demand is off. How is demand off? Well, the well, I think, you know, and I know I chose that word, right? And, and maybe it wasn't the best word, yeah. um, but I still stand by it. And the way that I would prove that demand is off, and I think it's artificially off, it's not off because people don't want real estate. It's off because interest rates and things have gone up and made it less affordable. And so people are like, ooh, now I'm up against that comfort zone of where I can buy. And I think it's one of the effects that we're having with inventory. I think there's a lot of people, maybe Dan and Sherry Perdome, that might think about selling their house and doing something different, except I am in for such a low interest rate that if I sold my house and got out of that interest rate and bought something else, same price, my housing costs would almost double. Sure. For me, that would be stupid, yeah. right? If I needed to move, right? Like if we had a life change and Dora moved out of the house and we're like ready to downsize, I wouldn't let that stop me. I would do it anyways. And so I could be adding to the listing inventory, but because the government is stepping in and 
artificially influencing the markets, it's creating a situation that less people are putting their property on the market because it will cost them so much more to buy something else. Yeah, and so that begs this point, and I think we talked about it last time I was with you, and that for so long, when we talk about real estate, we talk about buyers. Buyers, 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 right? What can the buyer afford? I've been doing this since 1985. This is the first time that I know of, that I recall, that it's actually the seller who can't afford to do a transaction. And that's what you just were explaining. Yes. The seller can't afford to do the trend. It's not about the buyer. It's about the seller. They can't afford to make a move. So we don't have inventory. Yes. But I was thinking about this driving in. Who's buying? Who are our clients that are buying? And the clients that are buying are people who are coming from other areas. They're not financing 90%. A, a lot of it's cash, or they're financing 60%. Yep. I'm sorry, our market is not like every other market. It's not New York City. And those guys who are leaving New York City, New Jersey, Connecticut, where are they coming? They're coming here. Yeah, great lead in. So article from CBS News, here are the states that Americans are moving to in the states that they're ditching, right? And it speaks exactly to that. So they're leaving those high cost states and they're moving to places like Hilton Head Island, specifically South Carolina, Texas, Florida, uh, North Carolina. Like those are the states, the busiest states in terms of having people move to those states. Mike, is it about po the politics of those states? Is it about the climate of those states? Is it about affordability? Is it because you're in South Carolina? Why are they coming here? Well, you got to talk to me. <laughs> uh, no, it's all of it. It's it's. Um... It's political environment, quality of life that yeah. they're looking for. It's weather that they're looking for, affordability that they're looking for. Now I say affordability, but that's changing for us, right? Sure. Yeah, so we were, prior to COVID, we were the best thing happening. We were so much afford more affordable than a lot of places in Florida. And we kind of got discovered, I think. Yes, yes, I think COVID made us pretty popular <laughs> as an alternative prior to COVID. We had not regained the losses that we realized during the Great Recession. If you went down to Florida, they had. So they ha they experienced a Great Recession just like us. But in 2016, 17, their prices eclipsed where they were in 2004 and 2005 and 2006. We hadn't. We were still about 10, 15 percent below where we were in our prior peaks. We've gotten that back. We've now cruised past that, but just a little bit. I was just down in Miami around the first of the year. Their prices are bananas. They're so off the charts bananas, like $25 million for a three bedroom condo. Yeah. Like it's bananas. Yeah. We're still a great deal. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that, we're still a great deal. Yeah, so I was, uh, speaking of going to markets like that, I was at Redondo Beach a month and a half ago and uh, with my kids and uh, we're walking along, we're looking at these houses on the beach. And I looked at this house out there, 25, uh, no, sorry, $18 million. And I told my daughter, I said, wait till I get back and I'm gonna send you a house that we have listed for $5 million. You compare that house to this house. There's no comparison. It's a better built house. It's a better view. It's, it's more privacy, 5 million versus 18 million. Why is the guy from California leaving California? Because he can buy so much more. Yeah. From the Island Packet, uh, more Beaufort County homes are for sale. Why isn't that help helping home buyers? Compared to what? Yeah. More homes compared to what? We just, that's what we talked about at the very beginning, right? Yep. The fact of the matter is inventory when we finished last year on Hilton Head Island was the lowest that it's ever been. Ever. In this time of year, January and February, is when inventory should start going up, and it's not. So to talk about things like price crashes, and it's just a bunch of BS. It's not real, it's not happening, the numbers don't prove it. The numbers that the I-1 packet is getting and reporting, they're BS. They're not real, are they? Nope. I mean, there's a perceived softening that's happened, right, in our market, right? Isn't it all just about the fact that the four and five and seven and eight million dollar properties that you would put on the market and get 12 offers on and sell in a day, that that has stopped? That's all that stopped. Yeah, that the more expensive market is not as vibrant. Right, as, as define more expensive. 
Well, the median the median value uh, for our MLS is seven hundred eighty thousand somewhere yep. below that. That's a median value. Yep. So up from like four something two years ago. Sure. Yeah. So there are not as many buyers in the median range as there are in the top range. So what is really expensive real estate? I'd say when you get over two and a half, three million, yep. that gets into that echelon. And that's where, and that is where you see inventory, more to choose from in that inventory. But even that being said, we just, we just put a $2.7 million house under contract, full asking price, cash. I would say that 2.7 is, is not the high end. I mean, I think it's, I think you're starting to bump up against it. I think it's when you get to the three and a half and the 4 million, that that's what's really cooled down, right? And I would say that that's what's cooled down because those buyers, um, nobody needs that house, three and a half, $4 million house. Somebody paying at two seven for a house, that could very well be a person that wants to move here that wants to live here and they sold their house somewhere else and that's what they're buying and they're gonna live in. But the four, four and a half million dollar houses, those are usually houses in the beach block of sea ponds. They're gonna be a rental property or there's some sort of an investment. And, and, and I don't think people are buying those right now at the pace that they were mm -hmm. just because of the uncertainty that's going on in the world right now, right? Like we're now starting to see people get laid off. Will layoffs affect the economy? Yes. I, I would say yes. I would say if we continue to have these layoffs, the people that were buying the four and a half million dollar houses that were spending a long time here working from their vacation home, right? That were working for a tech company that had a high paying job and had a huge bonus at the end of the year. If that dries up, will that affect the economy? Will that affect our market? Yes. Yes, that, that, that very well will probably affect our market but it hasn't yet. Yeah, it does seem to me the more the doom is coming, the more that that is pushed, that the more people are buying into it. Yep. Yeah, so I think it also has to do with the narrative that people are reading uh, that influences their decision-making. Do you mean the schizophrenic news media? I, I'm not even sure I'd call it schizophrenic. They're always looking for a story and stories typically aren't good news, it's bad yeah. news. So they kind of- Well, Mike, we went over one story and it says yeah. that people are moving to Hilton Head and to South Carolina at a relentless pace. And then another story saying inventory's up. Yeah, okay, this gets- <laughs> Right? And that's why, like, depending on what they think, they'll publish two articles the same day that contradict each other. Yeah. And so you're a consumer and you don't have access to the numbers like we do. Right. You don't know what the hell to think. I think if we're talking about what's affected this market and what's caused our market to change, we all have to say that it's what's happened with the Fed and interest rates. Like they have bumped up the interest rates and it's certainly had effect on transactions, right? Um, so let's get Susan in. Okay. Smith, and we'll talk a little bit about what's going on in mortgage. All right. So what's going on with mortgage? The, the feeling right now is just like with real estate, things are settling and they're not quite as edgy as they were with rates. Um, the Fed has, has made a, another quarter increase, but the feeling is that they're tempering it. I mean, I think everybody in the last month or so has expected a quarter point. Correct. But looking back two or three months ago when the narrative was, we're slowing this down at all costs and they were very aggressive. They were very aggressive. I'm surprised that it was just a quarter of a point this soon. Right. Um, I think that that is a huge, huge announcement to everybody that maybe we have settled a little bit. And rates are, are settling back a little bit too. Yep. So people are, are uh, not as panicked that they're looking at seven and a half and eight percent interest rates. They're looking sometimes, you know, they can get under six. You pay points even even more. Yep. So the quarter of a point they announced that on Thursday, right? And today is Monday. Today is Monday. And um and so have we seen an effect on uh interest rates? Uh Actually, yes, a little bit. So it's gone up? Yeah, no, they've gone down. Oh, they've gone down. They've gone. So they raised a quarter of a point and interest rates have gone down a little bit. Correct. Uh, Long-term mortgage rates are not necessarily affected by prime. Sure. By the Fed raising prime. Uh, adjustable rates are, 
home equity lines are and uh, credit cards, things like that, any other debts. But long-term fixed mortgage rates, um, ARM mortgage rates that are just starting out, uh, follow the 10-year treasury. And so the coupon has been coming down. People are feeling a little better about the future. Uh, and so we've had lowering of interest rate. The, uh, the stock market liked the Fed's news, didn't they? The stock market shot up after that announcement um, on Thursday. Uh, people, people want good news. You yep. and Mike were talking earlier about, you know, the the positioning of the news, what's in the media. And you mean the schizophrenic news? Media? Yeah, exactly. And people don't know what to think, what's real. You have to go in and read for yourself. So a lot of people think because the Fed raised prime again, that that's bad news. But in actuality, it was good news because they that it was just a quarter of a point is a signal. Correct. Correct. But maybe they're going to step back a little bit. Yep. Yep. The, 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 they're seeing the effects that they wanted to see and that they're they're slowing down. Think they've overshot it? Uh, we'll see. You know, you, 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 you can't really know because it's been schizophrenic as far as interest rates and the financial markets for a long time now. So projecting you could be wrong you got 50 50 shot i want you to stay here uh with us while uh, we answer the mail mailbag question if you would okay so mm -hmm. r paulson asks uh paulson wasn't paulson a uh wasn't he in the fed was there a paulson in the fed that was do you think this, this is him yes he's watching <laughs> awesome well we're help we're happy to help you mr paulson uh when will rage be back in the threes worked at the fed you should know right <laughs> uh, i'm just joking when will the rage be back in the threes not selling speaking to what mike was talking about not selling it until it goes back under four right so the assumption is not selling until it's under four because he's going to sell and he's going to buy something else assuming r is is a gentleman i would assume that that's the interest rate they have on their mortgage right now yeah and they want to do uh apple to apple they want to they want to have an even switch like you were talking about personally. Yeah. You're not interested because there's not a need to move and pay twice as much for your mortgage rate because you've got a great rate. Yeah. But but the part that's stupid about that for me is because I do a lot of stupid things. <laughs> right. We all do. Yeah. So the stupid part of that is I'll wait, you know, another two years um, and then uh, have to pay. 20%, 25% more for what I buy to save 2% on the interest rate. Exactly. Exactly. Right? Exactly. I mean, you're just trading dollars for dollars, right? Correct. I, I mean, if, you, if you're going to if you're gonna wait, you're going to pay more, you're going to sell more. Correct. For, for more, right? When you sell. And if you don't wait, you might sell for less and pay less, but then you can just refinance when, when rates come down. If rates come down, you refinance. You yeah. think it's an if? Um, no, I don't. I listen to the experts. I know Mike was in the industry before. I, I listen to the experts, the financial advisors. They all believe um, and feel strongly that we're going to have much more settling. That most of the buyers right now who do get a mortgage are going to have an opportunity to refinance to a low rate. No. That, that's what I believe, too. I, I believe that it's not a certainty, but if you're going to bet uh, whether they're going to go up higher I mean, they could go up a little bit higher, but if I'm going to bet and if I'm going to put money on it, you know, in two, three years from now, they'll be lower. Will they be in the threes? I think that that's less likely, but they could be. Those are historic. You know, the, the interesting thing about all this conversation goes back to what we said before. With Mr. Paulson, it's a case that he can't afford to sell. The seller can't afford. The, the seller can't afford to sell, or at least from his perception. He can't afford to sell. And there you have it. That's why we have a shortage of inventory. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is one of my favorite conversations. Thanks, y'all. Coming in. All right. Let's do it again next week. <laughs> what are you guys doing next week?